Hi there, it's Nathan from Holden, and today we're going to have a quick look at the brand new Panasonic S5 Mark II. This is the latest Panasonic mirror of a system, which I've been lucky enough to get my hands on, so let's take a closer look. So this is the new Panasonic S5 Mark II. It looks much like the S5 Mark I and is still built around a 24.2 megapixel full frame sensor. However, it has a new powerful engine using L squared technology, which provides two times the processing power of the Mark I. This collaboration between Leica and Panasonic is what drives the plethora of new features, such as the 6K internal recording. Many of these features were requested by customers, so Panasonic listened and applied them. The first new feature we're going to look at, and it's a big one for Panasonic, is the inclusion of a hybrid phase and contrast based autofocus system. This is a new system which combines the existing contrast based AF with an all new phase detection AF, which we've all wanted for some time from Panasonic. This gives you 779 focus points and several different auto tracking modes to maximise the way the camera's AF works across different situations. You also gain control of the AF speed and sensitivity. This is going to make the lights of gimbal work more efficient as you can really start to rely on the AF and that means you don't always have to fork out on the more expensive wireless follow focus kits. The same goes for recording interviews, especially if you have more than one camera to operate, so this is going to make life that little bit easier. You can also increase the sensitivity and speed of the focus pull, which allows for those more professional, organic looking focus rack shots that haven't always been possible with AF systems. The active image stabilisation has a new algorithm which detects walking movements more accurately. This helps the camera to predict your movement and in turn compensate more effectively. Panasonic claim this new system improves the image stabilisation by 200% when compared to its predecessor, the S5 Mark I. The S5 Mark II now has a much requested full size HDMI port. And there is also a new fan located just behind the viewfinder which allows the camera to reach temperatures of 40 degrees Celsius while still being fully operational. The recording limit has been removed across all the modes and codecs. However, the 4K Cine, 5.9 and 6K codecs will need you to disable the heat management setting. This will allow you to record until the camera gets too hot to function or your memory runs out. There are also several other codecs and frame rates to choose from. You can now record 6K internally at 3x2, 17x9 or 5.9K 16x9, 10-bit 420. To access the raw features, you will need an Atomos Ninja V Plus and the paid firmware upgrade DMW-SFU2. This will give you access to raw options via the HDMI output from launch. The formats available are full frame 5.9K at 24, 25 and 30 frames per second. There's ASPC 4K at 24, 25, 30, 50 and 60 frames per second. And for the anamorphic, it's 3.5K at 24, 25, 30 and 50 frames per second. There is also an improved OLED viewfinder with a 3.6 million dot display and a 0.78 times magnification. A couple of other things to mention would be the dual native ISO, which is at 100 and 640 for Rec 709 and 640 and 4000 when shooting in B-Log. These really will help you get those cleaner images in those challenging lighting environments. You also have 14 stops of dynamic range with the full V-Log gamut. You now have the option to bake in a LUT to your footage with the new real-time LUT feature, whereas before you could only overlay a LUT for preview. Of course this allows you to also view the LUT on the camera screen and EVF, or via the HDMI output. Combining the S5 and the DWM XLR1 adapter, you can get 96kHz and 24-bit audio recording, and of course two XLR inputs that can also provide phantom power all this in a compact and neat setup. When using the electronic shutter, you get 30 frames per second in AFS and AFC modes, whereas with the mechanical shutter, you get 9 frames per second in the AFS and 7 frames per second in the AFC. You also now get dual UHS-2 SD card slots, instead of the one that came with its predecessor. And finally, for you photography lovers out there, there is a 96 megapixel RAW and JPEG option via the image stacking mode. This makes capturing incredible detail much simpler and more efficient. Thanks for watching. And as always, you can find links to the products we've discussed in today's video in the description box. 
Please leave a comment if you have any questions and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on all the latest technology and news from Holden. See you next time.